Hello everyone, and welcome again to another Behind the Design, a Lola style. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. This is the continuation of the previous video. If you didn't see it, go check it out. Link in the description and on the outro. But wait, just a disclaimer. This is just speculation. Colors and clothes don't represent the character all the time, but it's still fun to compare the two. Without any further ado, I'm going to start on the most important characters. <coughs> uh, but not really that important. The Trial Captains. So, the Trial Captains will be in order of in-game encounter. By this logic, I will start with the gentle and wild for battles, Ilima. Ilima is the Prince of Trainer School, as well as the Prince of Pastel Colors. He kinda reminds me of a cupcake. Yeah, I see no difference. But moving on, Ilima wears a brown vest with a diamond-like pattern on it, along with a white undershirt, long white pants, brown and white shoes, blue socks, a blue bl a blue blur, <laughs> Sonic movie, a blue bag striped to his pants, and a glove on his left hand. Pastel colors overall may suggest romance, love, and fantasy. Gentle, thoughtful, and sensitive personality. But more generically speaking, Pastel also shows openness, softness, calmness, and composure. To be honest, even his brown shirt tones look pastel to me. Like a milky hot chocolate. But I'm not here to make people hungry. Or am I? Go get some food, I'll wait. You're back? Okay, let's continue. Brown provides a feeling of organization, elegance, history, and connection, as well as cozy feelings of relaxation and warmth. When we meet Elima and decide to visit his house, like any good stalker would, Nani? I'm just joking. Don't catch your panties in a twist. Like I was saying, inside Elima's room, we can see that he loves studying and has everything tidy and very organized. And not only that, but he seems very warm, relaxed and friendly towards us. Except in battle, he becomes kind of different. Brown actually describes Elima quite well. I wasn't really expecting that. Moving on. White. If you saw my previous video, you know how much characters love white. For Elima, white represents purity, goodness, brilliance, and cleanliness. So far, these colors represent the more serene and soft side of Elima, just like Brown did. But I want to know why he is so interested in battles and wants to get data for future strategies. And that's where the smallest amount of blues come from. Blue overall communicates significance, importance, and confidence. Lim overall seems like a calm and relaxing guy, doesn't look that confident to me. But again, during battle, Ilima becomes a completely different person. Someone who, who, who analyzes every move we make. A person with extreme confidence and importance. It really feels that he wants to kick our ass with the best of his abilities. More in detail, the lighter shades of blue inspires creativity and the freedom to... Once again, during the battles, he breaks from his comfort zone and becomes free to enjoy battles the way he wants to. That's actually all I found regarding him. The next trial captain for this list is Lana. In all honesty, when I saw her for the first time, I thought she was a little boy. I don't know why, my brain doesn't function correctly most of the time. Another thing that I never understood is that weird net thingy on her hair. Like, what even is that supposed to be? Well, in the end I found out it's a string hairband, as is seen in her concept art. For the rest of her clothes, Lana wears a white sleeveless shirt with the collar looking like a blue cape and a dark blue swimsuit under it. 
She also wears blue pants with a wave pattern that is tightened by a yellow string, which also has a badge attached. She also wears a pair of blue flip-flops and is usually seen with a fishing rod. Lana uses mainly water types, so most of the blues derive from that. But let's see if there is more than meets the eye. In terms of personality, Lena seems to be timid and serene, but still likes to show her skill and confidence as a trial captain, seasoning her dialogue with some jokes from time to time. The color blue is considered to be sincere, reserved and also quiet. Blue is also considered to be reliable and responsible. This side is more catering towards Lana's personal life. From her being the older sister, needed to set an example for the two younger sisters, as well as taking care of them when her parents aren't around. This color also exhibits security and confidence, something that Lana demonstrates as being a trial captain and an expert at fishing. In the manga, there are segments where she changed her personality, just like Ilima, where she becomes confident and rather scary, which is called Lana's Battle Mode. And well, apparently, Blue not only showed that Lana was a water trainer, but showed us as well her true colors. Bruh. The other color that Lana displays, it's white. Again, what's up with these characters in white? And in all honesty, I think this color is there for contrast, because blue and white are associated with the sea and sailors. Because, again, white is the color of purity and innocence, Although, there's something that I ended up discovering. White gemstones are believed to remove prejudice and preconceived notions. Once again, we're calling back to her battle mode, where she changes her behavior, making a shock and take away what we thought about her. That she's shy, timid and weak. Well, that's Lena for you. An adorable and sweet girl with a deep and strong personality when awakened. Now, to hit this video a little bit, Yahweh is our next captain. In my opinion, he had the best trial, hands down. I don't remember the last time I laughed so hard in a Pokemon game. Blast the fire trial. Also during this trial, we noticed that Yahweh got a lot of his inspiration in the traditional fire dances of Hawaii. So maybe his design was based on that tradition. Well, let's see. He wears red shorts with a darker red outline and a feather-like decoration, and sandals with the same color scheme. He wears no shirt, though he does have some black cloth stripes on his shoulders bound his necklace, which has a small badge. Yes, that black thing on his shoulder is a part of his necklace. I, I swear, the Alola characters have some weird ass accessories. However, funny enough, Kawi's clothes do make a lot of sense regarding the fire dance. The fire dancers often wear thongs made of leaves or cloth, and sometimes, kind of rarely, they wear shorts. The feather-like elements in his clothes are supposed to resemble the leaves used on the traditional costumes of these fire dancers. And of course, we can't speak of fire without mentioning his hairdo. Nothing screams more fire than that thing. <laughs> Holy moly! Regarding his overall design, I think we're finished. Now for the colors. Just looking at Kiawe's artwork and the battle pose, we already label him as someone who is intense and is packing with emotion, ranging from passionate to intense love to anger and violence. However, despite the initial label, when we interact with him, he doesn't seem to bear any anger nor violence. But instead, the intensity of his character comes from his willpower, determination, passion but for dancing and his family, as well as courage and leadership. The color red is energizing, it excites the emotions and motivates us to take action. It signifies a pioneering spirit and leadership qualities promoting ambition and determination. This is literally Kiawe described as a caller, but from time to time he does have some bursts of anger, 
but it isn't his main trait. There's one aspect that I want to mention though. Kyawe is a bit different in both the anime and the games. But in both, Kyawe seems to care a lot about his family and his partner Pokemon, and this passion shows. Before I go into the next trial, Captain, I want to add another fun fact about Kyawe. In the games, he seems to be more reserved, not opening much to the player. And when you have too much red, it can show oppressive behaviors. This is shown in some of his dialogue. I can't beat you if I keep my troubles to myself. But in the end, he does end up opening up. All this talking about fire is making me wonder... What's weak to fire? Well, grass! It's time for Mallow! Mallow is our next character and the final trial captain on the Akala Island. Mallow adorns a pink flower in her green hair and has green eyes. She wears a pink sleeveless shirt. On top of it, she wears a low saturated almost grey teal denim shorts and green shoes with small dark green bows. As a grass type trainer, Mallow's main color is green, obviously, which has somewhat obvious meanings to her personality and typing choice. Since green is always associated with the environment and nature. However, green also bears other meanings that can describe Mallow's personality. For example, green is an emotionally positive color, giving us the ability to love and nurture ourselves and others unconditionally. We can see that better portrayed in the anime, where Mallow cares and loves everyone unconditionally. Adding more to my argument, Green is also associated with charity work, the good parent and the helpful neighbor. In most instances, Mallow is seen as the older sister of the group. Green is not only attached to nature, but also to the generosity and spirit of Mallow's character. The other call that Mallow has is the teal. Almost grey, but it's still teal. But it can express the feeling of youthfulness, trustworthiness, and reliability. And finally, the color pink means sweet, nice, playful, cute, charming, feminine, and tenderness. All traits that can be found in Mallow. In all honesty, Mallow is the most forward character of the bunch. A whole look shows us all of her character. All the trial captains of Akala have been mentioned. Now to the next island, Hula Hula. Starting with Sophocles, or Sophocles, whatever you want to call him. The round human Pokemon. <laughs> nah, jokes aside, Sophocles is an electric type trainer. In his design, this can be seen in his scarf. It looks like a lightning strike. He wears a white t-shirt with an orange design of a Game Boy Color painted on it. He also wears brown pants with a yellow outline and some green shoes with lightning design and blue soles. On his right side of his hips, Sophocles has a keychain with a miniature electrode and Pikachu attached. Despite Sophocles having a variety of colors in his outfit, the main color attached to him is yellow, due to the fact that he's an electric trainer and captain. And to be fair, yellow is the strangest color to analyze, because it has a diversity of symbolism and meanings associated to it. But despite all of this, there are elements in yellow that are scraps of focus. Yellow is the color of acquired knowledge and resonates with the logical side of the brain stimulating our mental faculties and creating mental agility and perception. Yellow is creative from a mental aspect, the color of new ideas helping us to find new ways of doing things. This is literally Sophocles in a nutshell, he's always inventing new things to help others, whether it being in the anime or games. For example, him creating the device that caused the totem Pokemon to his trial, or him analyzing the development of the festival plaza and categorizing the best ice cream of the Alola region. Other aspects of yellow that can resonate with Sophocles are happiness, clarity, energy, optimism, intellect, but on the other hand, it represents cowardice and anxiety. 
At the start, Sophocles is seen as someone who is scared and somewhat anxious. This is easily seen more in the games than anime, despite the anime tossing from time to time some scary moments for Sophocles. The other colors to analyze are white, orange, brown and green. White is associated with purity, innocence, brilliance and illumination. While orange is associated with joy, creativity, success, change, determination and enjoyment. Even if Sophocles is usually uncertain, when he puts his mind into it, he's determined and succeeds on his endeavors. Brown is the color of reliability, security, home and honesty. To make things funnier, the color brown is a warm color that stimulates the appetite. <laughs> Maybe that's why Game Freak made him so chubby and round. Just saying. And finally, the color green. It's for both a lack of experience and need for growth. Sophocles, despite being extremely smart and good at technology, he still has a lot to improve, from his trial functioning properly without sucking all the energy, and the improvement of the security of the Festival Plaza, due to Team Rainbow Rocket hacking the system. Not only this, but he also needs to grow mentally. He seems very insecure at times and extremely worried if things go wrong. He needs to be tougher and cope better with adversity. This is all I could get on Sophocles' design. And there are still some mysteries that I could not decipher, like his eyebrows. What, what even is that? One thing is having a small or thick brows, but this? Why? Oh uh, well. But to end on a better mood, Sophocles is a pro gamer. He wears a t-shirt with the Game Boy Color logo on it, and he plays with a Nintendo DS. He has good taste. The next and final trial captain on this island is Acerola. I'm just going to say, I haven't searched about her clothes and colors, but I can already tell that the color purple already means royalty, due to her father ancestry. Acerola has purple hair and purple eyes. She wears a patchy dress of black, indigo and light blue, with two ribbons coming from her back. A gold armband on her left forearm, and light purple sandals. Her hair is short bob with her bangs gathered in a small top ponytail. If you look at the Sorola's clothes, they look like a bunch of cloths sewed together. And for someone who likes shopping, I find it strange that this is her main garment. So, be ready for what I'm going to say. And this is just speculation and actually almost like a theory. Technically, Acerola is an orphan. There are instances in the game that shows her father may be dead. For example, this line. Yeah, it belonged to my dad. Meaning that it's not his anymore. And more indicator of him not being around anymore is... I had to have all my dad's books moved here so they didn't get ruined by the Pokemon. Why didn't her dad do this himself? Hmm, strange, right? And this also explains why Acerola hangs a lot on the orphanage. And why there's a Mimikyu in her room. Maybe it belongs to her. So far we only know Nanu as her family member, and none of them seems like they have a lot of money, despite belonging to an old royal family. My theory for why Acerola likes to shop, but only wears rags, is that she doesn't have that much money, but likes to try stuff and imagining what feels like having them. I also feel that her dress has a lot of value to her. Whether it was made out of rags that Acerola managed to gather and sew, or if it was Nanu who made that dress for her because she had nothing after her father's death. Once again, this is just a very stretched and strange theory. But it makes sense and can explain why she wears that dress despite loving shopping. Another thing I want to add to this theory is that Acerola likes ghost types is probably due to the fact that's the closest she can get to her fallen ancestors. Maybe many ghost types are associated with the afterlife and death of both Pokemon and humans, like seen in Yanmask. Even in the anime, 
one of her Pokemon is the ghost of her Mimikyu. That Mimikyu is not alive anymore, it's dead, but it's there. Or Game Freak simply decided to make her dress look like a Mimikyu cloth, since it looks like a rag and it has two cloth strings coming from the back, just like Mimikyu's hands, when it attacks. That's like the most boring idea, but it's probably the most accurate to this dilemma. Now pushing this theory and speculation to the side. Let's go for the colors. Acerola's main color is obviously purple. Like I said before, purple is often associated with nobility and royalty. Not only that, but purple also means ambition, extravagance, creativity, wisdom, devotion, peace, pride, mystery, independence, and magic. Purple is also a spiritual color, a link between the spiritual and the physical worlds. Just with these symbols, we can tell that it represents a Sorolla, from her ancestry to her pride in it. Her mysterious presence at the beginning and not knowing much about her, her devotion and independence within the Eater House and as a trial captain. The spiritual level, there isn't much to add, since she uses ghost types that are the embodiment of connectivity between the physical and spiritual world. Also adding more personality to a Sirola, the color violet inspires unconditional and selfless love, devoid of ego, encouraging sensitivity and compassion. Violet is the color of humanitarian and can achieve a lot for those unfortunate. As seen in the game, Astrola cares a lot for those around her, from the children at the Eater House, Lily, her uncle Nanu, and even the player. However, there's a side effect of purple. Too much of this color, which happens in Astrola's design, can promote or aggravate depression in some way. With this in mind, are we sure that Astrola is happy with how things are? Or is she faking her happiness? So to not making people around her worried. What do you guys think? The other colors in Acerola's outfit are indigo, black and light blue. The color indigo is a color which relates to the ability to use the higher mind, to see beyond the normal senses with great powers of perception. Almost like something paranormal. Also, the service to humanity is one of the strengths of the color indigo. Powerful and dignified, indigo conveys integrity and deep sincerity. Both in anime and games, a Sorol is always prescribed as someone that's helpful. The color meaning of indigo also reflects great devotion, wisdom and justice, along with fairness and impartiality. The next color is black. Black is associated with mystery, strength, death, authority and rebellion. In case of mystery and death, it can be referring to her past and decisions of being a ghost trial captain. And adding to this, her Mimikyu in the anime being a ghost of a Mimikyu, like it was said before. Strength and authority is seen in her behavior towards Nanu, apprehending him from not doing the job like he should do, and to be strong for the little kids leaving in the orphanage. Black is a mysterious color that is typically associated with the unknown and is a visually slimming color and can make things appear to shrink in size. I can explain why a stroll is so short. <laughs> why am I so mean with these jokes? The last color for a Sorolla is light blue. In the wiki, they say it's light purple. Well, just going by the color, it's wrong. It's even more cyan than purple, to be honest, if you look at the color wheel. But continue. Light blue inspires creativity and the freedom to break free. This explains why Estrella always seems so carefree and expressive. Overall, blue is a color of trust, responsibility, honesty and loyalty. These are all the elements and theories I could gather regarding Estrella. Now for the last trial captain and apparently a somewhat fan favorite, Mina. Mina has ash blonde hair with pink paint splattered on the sides 
and grey eyes. Her face is marked with pink paint. Her shirt is white with a camouflage pattern of pastel green and pink paints. Originally it was a plain shirt, but with her work it got tainted. I've been there, trust me. Her jeans and sneakers are grey and ripped. Like, what even happened to those shoes? They look like clouds now, what? She carries a grey bag with all her painting supplies and paintbrushes and wears a trial cat and charm as a ring on her right index finger. By her design we can clearly see that she's very sloppy, other being with her hair and clothes, but her painting materials as well. The only thing on her mind almost all the time is painting. However, in the anime, there is an aspect that's pretty interesting that in the game we don't see. Apparently, Mina is capable of sensing how Pokemon feel deep inside, through her Rebombi, and by Pokemon's drawings. In here we see a more tender side of Mina that's not her usual, I'm painting every second. Mina's main color is pink, just like her Pokemon type, Fairy. Pink is a delicate color that means universal love of oneself and of others. Pink represents friendship, affection, harmony, inner peace and approachability. Large amounts of the color pink can actually create physical weakness. Mina is not sick in any way, but she does seem to have a weak, almost fragile structure, more than Lana in my opinion. Although intense pink, more like the one on Mina's face, shows more of a playful character, which in a way she is, especially in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Pink is intuitive and insightful, showing tenderness and kindness with its empathy and sensitivity. The color pink represents the sweetness and innocence of the child in all of us. The constant use of pink, as seen on her face all the time, can often lead to immaturity, silly, and abandoning your adult responsibilities. This is seen on Pokemon Sun and Moon with a lack of responsibility towards her trial and duties. Pink from a negative color meaning can represent a lack of willpower, a lack of self-reliance, and a lack of self-worth. It can indicate an overly emotional and overly cautious nature. In the games, it is said that when she was young, the snubble of her family destroyed a drawing that she made, trying to show its appreciation. An action Mina interpret as her art not being good enough and striving to become better. And probably that's why she always has a need to be constantly drawing, not just because she likes it, but probably also feeling that she's not good enough on what she does. In a way, pink does represent Mina's personality, just like a glove. Even her trial just seems so sweet, making us battle all the trial captains, showing us how much we improve ever since the start of our journey. But for some reason, this doesn't seem enough. The other color that she has is white, blue, and some splats of green. White is the blank canvas waiting to be written upon, or in this case, painted upon. While white isn't stimulating to the senses, it opens the way for the creation of anything the mind can conceive. White's basic feature is equality, implying fairness and impartiality, neutrality and independence. Originally, Mina expresses negative connotation of white. It's isolating and empty. It implies a feeling of sterility, detachment and disinterest, providing the little stimulation for the senses. This is what I felt when playing Sun and Moon towards Mina. She seemed so distant. So I was kind of disinterested by her. But like before, in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, she was expressing more the characteristics of pink. Mina's blue is to symbolize the creativity and the freedom to break free. But unlike Asurola, Mina expresses this by traveling and painting the beauty she sees in the world. And finally, her pastel, almost pale green, indicates immaturity, youthfulness, and inexperience. It allows us to see things from a new perspective, to make a fresh start. Now you guys know some possible thoughts behind the designs of these characters. Once again, this is just speculation. My next video of this series will be about the Kahunas, so click the bell to stay notified for future videos. 
don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But most importantly, share this video with your Pokemon friends and come up with new theories and reasons behind the designs of these characters. We can always discover something new. See you on my next video. Stay tuned, my friends.